Bishop John McGee, who was the personal secretary to Pope St. John Paul II, tells a story of the Pope shortly after his election. It seems that a government official came to the Vatican and wanted to speak immediately with the new Pope. Bishop McGee went to the Pope's room, but he was not there. He went to the library, no Pope. Then he went to the chapel, the kitchen, and even the roof looking for the Pope, but he still could not find him. With no sign of the Pope, Bishop McGee began to think about the Morris West novel, The Shoes of the Fisherman, where a newly elected Slavic Pope slips out of the Vatican to find out what was happening with ordinary people in his new diocese. Could the new Pope be actually doing the same thing, he wondered. Finally, Bishop McGee ran into a Polish priest who knew the new Pope well, and he said to him, we have lost the Holy Father. I have looked everywhere, and I cannot find him. The Polish priest asked calmly, did you look in the chapel? Yes, replied Bishop McGee, and he was nowhere in sight. The Polish priest responded, go further in, but do not turn on the light. Bishop McGee walked quietly into the darkened chapel and in front of the tabernacle, lying prostrate on the floor, was the Pope. The Polish priest knew, what, knew that before his election, the Pope often prostrated himself before Jesus in the, Holy, in the Blessed Sacrament. Tonight, we commemorate the greatest of all tangible gifts. We hear the words that Saint Paul, uh, of St. Paul quoting Jesus saying, this is my body that is for you, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus gives himself to us in a humble form. Under the appearance of bread and wine, we receive his body, his, his blood, his soul, and his divinity. In the first reading taken from Exodus, we are given an account of the origins of the Jewish feast of Passover, when the Israelites celebrated God's breaking the chains of their slavery and leading them to the promised land. In that moment, God established a covenant with them, making of them his own beloved people. And he gave them two instructions. Prepare a meal with a slaughtered lamb and use the blood to mark their homes so that they may be saved and able to flee from their slavery. St. Paul recalls how Jesus transforms this Passover meal at his Last Supper into the first Eucharistic celebration. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and given it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. In this very moment, Jesus institutes the Holy Eucharist as a sign and reality of God's perpetual presence with his people. Here is the link between the Hebrew and the Christian covenants. St. Paul, however, never mentions a lamb. He does not need to, because Jesus is the new lamb. Jesus is the paschal lamb. He served as both the priest and the victim of a sacrifice and became the lamb of God. Jesus is the sacrificial victim of the new covenant whose blood will adorn the wood of the cross. In this meal, the emphasis is on the unleavened bread and body, on wine and blood. This meal becomes now the sacrament of a new liberation, not just from physical slavery, but from every kind of slavery, especially to sin and evil. In the gospel story, we hear how Jesus first washed his apostles' feet and told them they should do the same for each other. Then he gave his apostles his own body and blood under the appearance of bread and wine as food and drink. First Jesus washes their feet, then he feeds them. Then he went to die for us all. In these readings we have heard and in this Eucharistic meal we share tonight, we are called to become other Christ for everyone. Christ the healer, Christ the compassionate and selfless brother, and Christ the humble washer of feet. Our reception of Jesus in this Eucharist and our loving service to others go hand in hand. Just as we are nourished by the body and blood of Jesus, 
we are called to nourish others as well. Just as the body of Jesus is broken up for us, we are also called to be broken for others. What Jesus said to his apostles, he says to us, I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. So let us go further into that chapel, that is, our Lord's heart, and follow him on, our journey, follow him on this journey of life humbly laying ourselves down before him in adoration and praise for what he has done for us.